Return of the Mount Hua Sect, Chapter One Hundred and Forty Nine. Anyone who touches my stuff is dead. The hallway within the stone corridor was brighter than expected. Hong Deguang looked up with narrowed eyes. There are night stone lamps being used. This wasn't a place that was designed for people to casually access. Yet the owner lavishly placed night stone lamps around. Clearly, the person who made this place had vast wealth. Crack. Crack! It wouldn't be strange for Yaksun to have such a fortune. He was known to trade his pills for gold. Crack! Crack! But what is that sound? Hong Deguang turned his head back, only to be overwhelmed with shock. Clinging to walls like a spider, Chongming was extracting the night stone lamps that were stuck in the ceiling. What? What are you doing? Can't you see? I'm making money. Ah!、Uh, no. Hong Deguang, whose mind was cluttered with a thousand questions, pointed at Chong Miao. I was just supposed to follow while this guy led the way. What the hell is he doing? Are you really doing this right now? Do you know how much this stuff costs? That's why you're a beggar because you don't care about such things. You think I'm a beggar because I don't have money? Of course. What? Well, that is right. I am a beggar because I don't have money. You seem to want to make a lot of money. I need to live well. Do you know how many mouths there are to feed in Mount Hua? Hong Deguang shook his head. The more he learned about Chong Miao, the more horrible he felt. Maybe the Wu Dang at the forefront have already found the pill, right? I don't think so. How do you know? Because they're still moving. Hong Deguang's face hardened in an instant. Can he feel their key? Hong Deguang didn't feel anything. He thought that he could feel a crowd moving ahead of them, but the sense was vague, and he couldn't be sure. But Chong Miao said that he could clearly feel their presence and track their movements. How strong must the senses be to follow their key with such clarity? Hong Deguang reevaluated how he looked at Chong Miao. Ever since he met this man, he continued to be surprised and kept seeing different sides of him. But isn't it still true that they're going to arrive first? Right. Chong Miao didn't seem to care. That'll just make things more comfortable for us. Huh? You'll understand once we get there. Oh my God! There are night stone lamps here too. Hong Deguang covered his face as he witnessed Chong Miao spin forward and collect another lamp. Can I really trust this brat? Perhaps this was going to become a gamble with his life on the line. Hong Deguang was beginning to regret his hasty decision. Doesn't it seem like the hallway is getting narrower? Hearing Yun Zhong's words, Beg Chun nodded. I think the same. The hallway was wide enough for five people to walk side by side when they first entered, but now it had shrunk so that three people would need to walk shoulder to shoulder to fit. I don't see the need to make it like this on purpose. Beg Chun frowned. But his doubts soon disappeared as more significant problems arose. Wait, this. Everyone's faces hardened. The scent of blood. A thick, lingering scent of blood began to permeate the area from ahead. Chong Miao. Hmm. Shall we check it out? Chong Miao moved forward while the disciples of Mount Hua and the Beggars Union followed. It didn't take long for the group to face the identity of the grisly stench. This, Beg Chun and Yun Zhong fell silent upon seeing the pile of corpses that towered in front of Chong Miao. Several people were lying on the floor and bleeding. What was especially strange about the situation was that the blood pouring from the mouths of the deceased were not red, but an unnatural black instead. Poison. Were any of the people that entered before us proficient with poisons? Hong Deguang asked with a stiff expression. The Tang family was naturally the first place that would come to mind when it came to poison, but apart from them, there were many people and organizations that utilized poisons. No, this was a trap. Huh? A trap? Look. Hong Deguang narrowed his eyes and looked at the corpses Chong Ming was pointing to. Ah, inconspicuous needles were embedded in the body, 
and unless one looked closely, they were virtually unseeable. The corpses seemed to have been struck from all directions, not just one. Did it come out of the walls? It was nerve-wracking. At first glance, no one would have expected traps to have been installed here. Only upon careful observation could anyone spot the tiny holes drilled into the walls. That meant that if Hong Daeguang had passed through this location first, he would have fallen. I never would have expected Yaksun to set up such a cruel trap. Hong Daeguang realized that his thoughts until now had been horribly wrong. Of course, this was the sword tomb. However, Hong Daeguang was someone who knew that the untracing seizing sword's true identity was Yaksun. He never anticipated the Yaksun, who dedicated his life to saving others, would set up such a brutal device in his tomb. If he intended to make it easy, he wouldn't have built his tomb in such a place. That is true. Hong Daeguang alternated his gaze between the wall and the corpses as his expression filled with disgust. This whole affair may end up boding more ill than good. While Hong Daeguang hesitated, Cho Myung nonchalantly walked forward as if everything that happened was insignificant. Ch Chong Myung, what? When Chong Myung looked back with an unnatural calm, it was actually the disciples of Mount Hua that felt bewildered. Their corpses. It was true that they lived as martial artists, but this was their first time seeing corpses this close and personal. Even Baek Chun, who had the chance to see death during his occasional work outside the sect, was unable to deal with this gloomy situation. But for Chong Myung, this was a common occurrence. He had fought a war with the heavenly demon sect in his previous life and witnessed so many corpses until he had grown tired of it all. After all, hadn't it even become normal for them to eat their meals surrounded by corpses after every battle? So there was no need for Chong Myung to make a fuss over this. If you stay here, your chances of getting hit will increase. So let's move on. And don't touch anything around you. It's dangerous. Ah, oh, I see. Baek Chun gulped as he followed Chong Myung. Still, he was unable to withdraw his gaze from the corpses piled around. This is Gong Ho. He felt like he was starting to realize what that meant. This place was far from outside the protection offered by Mount Hua. Anything could happen. If they weren't careful, they might find their heads severed from their necks. With renewed vigor, Baek Chun closely followed Chung Myung as they carefully moved ahead. Are there any more needles left to come? Who knows? Chong Myung just shrugged. I don't know what kind of man this Yaksun was, but one thing is certain. What is that? This isn't just a treasure trove. Chong Myung spoke with a serious expression. There was no need to install such traps if this was merely a tomb that hid some knowledge. The tomb's creator must have had some other intentions hidden here. The level of risk will vary depending on the creator of this place's intention. At this moment, Cho Myung decided to behave a bit more cautiously. Oh, that one! Hong Daeguang suddenly pointed to the ceiling. Isn't that different from what we saw till now? Huh? Cho Myung nodded. Right. Until now, all the night stone lamps that Cho Myung pilfered had a blue color but the one Hong Daeguang was pointing out now was red. Looks expensive. Without saying anything more or giving the others time to react, Hong Daeguang flew up and removed the lamp from the ceiling. Tuck. Hong Daeguang landed on the floor and looked at the lamp with curious eyes. I think this is the first time I've heard of a red one. But maybe this is a treasure. What the hell did you just do? Huh? Hong Daeguang smiled at Chong Myung. If I don't want to continue living as a beggar, I need to diligently make money. Don't tell me all the nightstone lamps here are yours. Surely, I can take at least one. I... Chong Myung's eyes shone. Definitely told you not to touch anything strange, didn't I? Hong Daeguang looked around with a slightly embarrassed expression. 
Well, this thing isn't too strange. It was then, rumble. A very small sound reverberated. It was heavy and dull, but not loud. Ugh, rumble, rumble. Shortly after, the sound grew louder. A cold sweat began to drip from Hong Daeguang's forehead. Ugh, no, crumble. The sound was getting closer. Everyone's eyes were drawn to where the sound came from. The hallway they had passed before. There was a loud noise coming from there. At the same time, the area they were in began to tremble and quake beneath them. Phew! <sighs> Chung Myung sighed and smiled. What are you all doing? Huh? If you don't want to die, then run! With those final words, Chung Myung ran ahead at light speed. Quickly grasping the situation, Man Hua's disciples rushed to follow and charged at full strength. R run! Run! Beggars, run! Hurry! Hong Daeguang shouted, even without knowing why the beggars had already begun running. The reason for everyone's quick escape was quickly revealed. Rumble, rumble. The hallway was collapsing. Soil and rocks poured down like flowing water as the ceiling collapsed. Shit! Hong Daeguang, who was terrified, flinched and ran as fast as he could. If he got caught, he would die. There would be no chance of survival. Ah! Run! Beggars! Run for your life! If you don't run, you'll die! Ah! This is why I don't like dealing with beggars! Chong Myung yelled while running. Did you boil and eat a tree frog or something? I definitely told you to be careful, but you decided that you just had to go and touch things. Are you really someone that lives in Gangho? Of course. Hong Daeguang had nothing to say about that. Ah! Ah! It's falling! It's collapsing! Run, beggars! If you fall behind, you're dead! Ah! This is all because of the branch leader! The resentment of the beggars was brought to the open air, and the culprit that caused the situation could do nothing except bow his head and run for his dear life. How could I have known? The heavens were indifferent. There was nothing Hong Daeguang could say when the others put it like that. He only touched one thing, but it made sense for the others to blame him. Right now, there was no time for him to chastise others or curse the heavens. Any time wasted could leave him dead, especially since the ceiling seemed to be collapsing faster and was catching up to their group. To make matters worse, the hallway was becoming narrower and narrower. Now, they were forced to run in a single file line. Chong Myung groaned and fell back. Do not look back and run. Keep running. Mount Hua's divine... Bong. Hong Daeguang, who choked back tears and instinctively tried to look back, firmly fixed his gaze ahead of himself after receiving a swift kick in the ass from Chong Myung. To hit me? He said not to look back. So why did Hong Daeguang want to look back? Why am I like this? I was never like this above ground. Crumble. Rumble. Hong Daeguang could hear the ceiling collapsing right behind him. The dust that rose from the collapse tickled the back of his neck as he hastened away. Yeah, everyone will die. Run! Hong Daeguang did everything he could to move as fast as possible. When he felt pain in his legs, he decided to run on all four limbs and then back to two as needed. There's light ahead. Get there. Hurry. Everyone's eyes looked at the newfound goal. Those that confirmed the existence of the light coming from the end of the hallway squeezed out every bit of strength remaining and carried their weary legs to the finish line. Ah! As all the others escaped, Hong Daeguang also ran for the light. And crumble. Seeing the rubble at his feet, he fell to the floor and turned back. It's over. He didn't fully understand what happened, but this place didn't seem to be collapsing. The trap ended with the previous hallway. But... Chong Myung! Damn it! Hong Daeguang jumped to his feet. His feet were white with dust from the rubble, 
showing that he was the last person to make it out of the hallway. Mount Hua's divine dragon! Hong Deguang freaked out and looked back. There was no one behind him. This could only mean that Cheng Myung failed to leave the hallway. Hong Deguang's eyes trembled as he realized what had happened. No matter how talented the child was, it was impossible to survive such a structural collapse. Because of me! Guilt rushed over Hong Deguang, a young genius who was supposed to be without equal, who should have gained fame and fortune, had just lost everything to his mistake. He wanted to bite his tongue and die when he thought about what he had done. Mount Huaz, it was then. Bang! Suddenly, the collapsed rubble broke open with dust scattering all around. Chong Myung! Damn it, you had us worried for nothing, brat! Hong Deguang was shocked. He, he's alive! Right, there's no way Mount Hua's divine dragon would die in such a way in a place like this. Hong Deguang was so glad that he wanted to run over and hug Chong Myung. But that joy soon disappeared into the distance. Where's the beggar? The dust settled. Chong Myung, covered in dust all over, was rubbing his eyes as they shot a fierce glare that looked like he wanted to kill several people at once. His lips twisted into a smile as soon as he found Hong Deguang, and Hong Deguang went pale right away. Ah, no, Divine Dragon, the thing is, you must have a lot to say to me. Chong Myung relaxed his stiff neck muscles and walked toward him. But do you know? W what? If everything could be resolved with words, there would be no need for wars. Let's get hit a few times and then we can start again. Hong De Guang was frozen by the visage of an angry devil as he watched Chong Myung rush toward him.